So you probably read the title of this video and you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, no, there's no way the title of this video is accurate. Most likely this video is clickbait, but lo and behold, I'm telling you guys, this is not clickbait. This is soon gonna be a reality where you'll be able to play VR games from the comfort of your own home through the power of the internet. And I actually think this is pretty amazing because it really does show the future of gaming. It really does show how technology is advancing. And overall, this is some pretty uh, impressive stuff if this actually works right. Now, first of all, when it comes to streaming VR games, there are gonna be quite a few limitations in place before you can actually stream a VR game. And then on top of that, this won't be accessible to everybody because this is coming out into like a beta program. So only a select few people will be able to experience this before this actually rolls out to the public, if it even rolls out to the public. But right now it is in beta form. And let's actually take a look at some of the requirements you actually need to have when it actually comes to streaming VR games because the requirements are gonna be super beefy and you need to know this before you even try to uh, consider this yourself. First of all, it's going to be on a really weird uh, streaming service called Shadow. Apparently, from what I'm hearing, Shadow's been around for a little while now, but I'm really unfamiliar with the uh, streaming service Shadow. Apparently, Shadow's been around for a while, and they actually let you stream regular console quality games. It's just that I'm not really into uh, the streaming, streaming future. I'm not really invested in it, so I know little to nothing about a lot of these different streaming services outside of like Google Stadia, xCloud, G NVIDIA GeForce Now. I really don't know all the other ones because I'm assuming there's more than just those ones on the market. And apparently there's this one called Shadow. So here is Shadow right here. It is going to be launching uh, uh, with a closed beta for VR gaming. Right now you can apparently use Shadow to play normal console games or just regular games if you want to play those. But yes, they are going to be launching a closed beta for VR gaming and you can sign up for this if you want to check out how or check out uh, how it's going to work when it comes to streaming video games through the power of the cloud and through the power of streaming. And the biggest uh, hurdle with this obviously is going to be that it is going to the requirements to actually stream the games is going to be pretty beefy, but you do have to realize you are going to be streaming VR games, and VR games are much more uh, powerful than your standard uh, regular video games, so that does make sense that the requirements would be uh, very beefy, but here we go with the uh, requirements uh, right here. There are some ways you, you have to uh, set this up. I'm not really going to go over the whole... Uh, setup process you can pause the video right here if you want to read how you uh, set this up and uh, things like that it is pretty cool if this thing actually uh, works correctly it is cool that you'll be able to stream pc quality vr games uh directly from the uh, from the cloud just because you guys know uh pc vr gaming is just very expensive you have to buy a gaming pc that's pretty beefy and then alongside the gaming pc you do have to buy the software and alongside the software you have to buy for your gaming pc you also have to buy uh let's say for instance the vr headset itself and to get a pretty good experience you have to spend a lot of money for the pc for the vr headset for all the games it can just be very costly to actually play vr so i can see why so many people just honestly do not want to play vr it makes sense that it's just something that's not really accessible to a lot of people because it is fairly expensive to get in VR, unlike traditional gaming's not too bad to get in, but this one is a totally different ball game. The one downside to this for sure is the fact that you do have to have a specific VR headset. You can't just use any VR headset. So for instance, right now, you may have a VR headset laying around. Most likely, it may not work. It looks like it's going to work with the very popular Oculus Quest. The, the Oculus Quest is a standalone VR headset. If you ever used it or heard about it, it allows you to play mobile games because it's pretty much running off a cell phone processor or a mobile processor. It came out in uh, tw uh, it came out last year uh, around early uh, 2019. I think it released in May, and yeah, it's been out on the market for a little while now. I think that headset runs about $399 for the base one. It's not the most cheapest thing in the world, but it's not the most expensive headset. 
taking in uh, consideration there is much more powerful ones and much more better ones especially for uh, PC gaming but you do have to use that one it's kind of weird they're actually making their consumers use the oculus quest and not a dedicated PC one because like I said again the oculus quest is not actually a VR headset that's really meant for uh, PC gaming you can use it with your PC actually even though it is a standalone headset even outside of this specifically if you wanted to right now you could but honestly it's just weird you would think they would want to use a dedicated PC uh, VR headset because the quality most likely would be better it's made for PC overall that really makes sense but their, their, their choice of VR headset is just kind of odd if you ask me but hey maybe they want to make this as mainstream as possible and I know the Oculus Quest is definitely one of the most popular VR headsets out there I remember there was a time around Christmas where mine was just totally sold out and you couldn't even get the Oculus Quest until like February of this year that really shows you how many people are interested in the uh, Oculus Quest the one nice thing I will say about the Oculus Quest is the actual resolution in the headset is actually pretty good it may not be the best one on the market but it's definitely one of the better ones on the market so you should be getting a, a pretty uh, decent experience when it comes to uh, streaming this uh, the one thing they do notice uh, all your requirements for your internet are very, very beefy, and I know some people out there probably won't be able to actually run this even if they have the Oculus Crest. I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of the requirements. You need 100 megabytes down. That is extremely fast, and I know a lot of people do not get 100 megabytes down, but of course, you do have to remember we are talking about VR here, and VR is not just plastering a game up to your monitor it's going to be having two different eyes so they probably have to render two different images of course you need the fastest internet as possible it also says you might need a 20 megabytes up so 100 megabytes down and 20 megabytes up this is not going to be for the average consumer it's going to be for somebody who really pays for amazing internet of course the best thing to do is to be on a wired connection when you're actually uh, testing this out and then it does say you need a ping less than 15 mega me uh, 15 ms 15 milliseconds so you can see the requirements are just extremely crazy for this pretty much 100 megabytes down 20 megabytes up a ping less than 15 milliseconds and then it does say if you are going to be using a wireless setup it really recommends that you actually be using the five gigs uh a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi router which a lot of them nowadays are actually switchable from 2.4 gig I do believe to 5 gigahertz and you most likely need to be on 5 gigahertz I think there is some limitations uh, with 5 gigahertz I think one of the biggest hurdles with the 5 gigahertz network is the fact that you have to be extremely close to your router I do believe if I'm, I'm corrected so you can see it's just not for the, the faint of heart it's for people to pay for pretty good internet and the one downside to definitely this service alone is going to be the fact that even if it works extremely well, streaming VR is also not going to be practical for just a lot of different people because you do really have to remember that a lot of people do have connections that are that are going to be uh, going to have a data cap even on home Wi-Fi or home internet packages, which absolutely sucks. I know a lot of these companies cap you at like one terabyte. One terabyte may seem extremely big when you take in consideration how much you do on the internet and one terabyte seems like a lot but honestly one terabyte is just not a lot considering how much we do nowadays and especially this service alone I can assume if you're gonna be playing uh, VR for hours and hours and hours of course this uh, setup is just gonna be extremely expensive because most likely with everything else that you're doing on the internet whether you're watching like other streaming services like Netflix Hulu maybe you're playing games online maybe you're uploading things to the internet overall I can see your data cap definitely easily going over a uh, the data cap just by uh, playing uh, a lot of VR games. So this is not the most practical way to play VR. It's probably the most convenient way to actually play VR, but it's not going to be the most practical way in the long run just because uh, the amount of bandwidth you're using to actually stream the games is going to be out of control. But again, I guess you'll just have to find a way to either limit your time playing VR if you want to use this or maybe get a package where you can get unlimited data from like your... Uh, internet service provider because that's absolutely nutty but it makes sense a lot of these would have 
a lot of these internet services would have data caps just because, well, you look at the way the internet's working and more and more things are eating up more bandwidth, taking up more data, and they want you to go over. They want you to pay all these overages or they want you to pay extra for like unlimited data, which is absolutely ridiculous. And they're gouging their consumers, but that's the way the world works. Anytime a company can get away with gouging their customers, they're going to do it. Again, I want to make this really clear before I head out. This is going to be on the shadow, whatever shadow is. I'm not too familiar with this streaming service. I think you can sign up right now. There is actually one other requirement that I actually uh, want to talk about. Apparently, you have to own at least one VR game, which is weird. I don't know why you would need to own another VR game. Maybe they want to make sure that you're invested in VR, but that just sounds like a really odd requirement. So even if you went out and bought like the Oculus Quest and you signed up for this service and you wanted to test it out for yourself, you would still need to at least own one VR game, of course. And this is going to work on the uh, I want to know where it's actually going to work, actually, now that I think about it. And if instead it has reduced description mode, and then, okay, they're talking about the streaming part of the uh, streaming service. It looks like the uh, uh, the application for this service is going to open uh, March 13th, which is tomorrow as of the time of this recording, which this video is going up on actually uh, March 13th. So you can go ahead and try to uh, get on the closed beta. Of course, they'll probably have more details about how this is going to work. Are you going to be playing it from the... Uh, Oculus Quest itself. Are you going to be playing it on a uh, PC? I would, I would assume you'd be playing all your games on the PC because that actually uh, makes sense because you're going to have to log into some type of a uh, service and you're going to need a little bit of power to actually stream the games. It honestly wouldn't make sense even though the Oculus Quest is a standalone VR headset to actually be streaming it from the Oculus Quest of course because their service is not probably not going to be compatible with the Oculus Quest so you have to have some type of PC around. You're going to connect the Oculus Quest to that PC alone and then you're going to try this. Again keep in mind this is a beta program so it might not be all fleshed out. You do have to remember this is as far as I'm aware, the first time any company is actually letting you stream VR games, there's been multiple streaming video game services like Google Stadia, xCloud, NVIDIA GeForce Now, uh, on live from way back in the day, but they didn't allow you to stream VR games. So if your experience is not that great, take in consideration this is a very new thing and VR, VR games are very hard to actually like render and things like that because they do need a lot of processing power. But if somehow they can actually uh, pull this off, that really shows the direction of uh, video games and that pretty much proves the future of video games for the most part is going to be a streaming future. It does make sense. I just wish these internet service providers wouldn't actually gouge their customers and give us like limited data, which it's so easy nowadays to go over that like one terabyte cap. Or if you want to get rid of the, the uh, overages, you have to pay for like unlimited data extra, which is getting ridiculous. It just really does suck. So there you guys go. You Now you can officially uh, stream VR games for the first time, of course. Anyway, guys, this is Wayne.